Hello there everyone and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if this is your first time watching. And today we're starting on The Legend of the Star Heroes. Oh, wait what? Why are there two for this one? I don't have a clue. Whoa, this one's longer. Okay. So we're just going to do all the main stuff. Otherwise we'll be here for hours. Chosen by the World Legacy. The rulers of this star were not human. The world was ruled by seven me mechanical life forms known as the Mech Knights. And across the land spread their vanguard, the Crawlers. These crawlers tend to swarm and destroy all human-made structures in their path. They most likely lack any emotions. Helpless before those ruthless machines, mankind had no choice but to live in hiding. Dense with thick trees, gloomy even in daytime, a, hinter a hinterland known as Forest of the Stars. Therein lays a hidden village where humans lived inconspicuously. The village was protected by a barrier that would prevent intruders from invading or even discovering it. The ritual wand passed down through many generations made the barrier extremely resistant and it had never broken, not once. But even so, the villagers were suffocated by their anxieties day after day, not knowing when the great threat would come knocking at their doorstep. From within the suffocating unease of the village, there were still those determined to fend off the crawlers. Orum and Ningesu. Okay. There was a reason they fought so desperately. It was the it was the village priestess and the young and the younger sister of Ningesu, Ib. From birth, the priestess possessed divine power that synergizes with their ritual wand to create barriers. Ib's power was the strongest the village had ever seen in its history, but it was meager compared to the fighting forces that grew stronger by the day. Her companion saw how hard she was trying to put on her brave face for the villagers, and wished they could lighten her burden even by a little. Orum and Ningirsu, along with their baby dragon Imduk, crossed the barrier in hopes of slaying even just one Kurula. One day, Ib heard from inside the forest a faint sound like that of a human voice. Aram and Ningesu could not hear it. However, Ib proclaimed that she keeps hearing the voice. Afraid Ib would venture into the forest alone, Aram Ningesu and the baby dragon Imduk set foot inside the hinterland. What kind of names are those? Wait, like, seriously, what kind of names are those? I don't have a clue. They're weird names. The sun had already set, leaving only starlight to guide them. The scent of trees and soil hung in the cold air. Though her footing was unsure, it ventured the forest as if she were being guided. Careful not to lose sight of her, the three looked out for crawlers as they followed her. Suddenly, with an abrupt shriek, Ib vanished before their eyes. Rushing to the place where they'd lost sight of her, they saw Ib had fallen off a low cliff. It appeared Ib had been so spellbound in the direction of the voice she hadn't noticed there was no ground before her. The three descended the cliff and were relieved to find Ib uninjured. Before their eyes, a mysterious structure appeared. If it had been there before, they would have noticed it, but as if a structure had been there for hundreds of years, it was enconced in trees and entwined in ivy. They nervously approached the building. The wand Ib held in her hand glowed and the building started to rumble, as if in response. A mighty light radiated from the building, blowing aside the trees and cloaking everything in blinding light. Even with their eyelids closed, the light pierced mercilessly through. When they finally opened their eyes, a fairy fluttered in the air before them. 
the fairy spoke to the startled party. I am Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, a spirit that has been sealed inside the building that released the bright light known as the World Legacy World Chalice. In previous times it was her duty to guide mankind but was obstructed by the Mech Knight. For many years she had been waiting for a world hero capable of activating the World Chalice. And that they are those world heroes. Please lend me your strength and gather the scattered starlight and save the world from the great darkness, she spoke. Though bewildered by Lee's story, Orem and the group were moved by her earnestness and decided to lend a hand. Sick, that looks sick. Hearing their resolve, the fairy Lee smiled and bestowed upon them the powers of the awakened world chalice. They look sick. I'm not gonna lie. They do. It's about as much as I know of them, but they look sick. Now let's see how this deck actually plays, because I don't have a clue. Oh nice, we got the custom sleeves on it. What makes a World Chalice deck unique? You can bring out a slew of powerful Link monsters by starting with Link with summoning a normal monster and leading to further Link summons. When World Chalice Link monsters are sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon a World Chalice monster from your hand. This can, this can allow you to perform even more Link summons and recover quickly from your opponent's attacks. Keep World Chalice monsters ready in your hand for an even more effective strategy. I will try. I cannot promise anything, but I will try. Link summon Orem, the World Chalice Blade Master. Summon chosen by the World Chalice, and then Link summon to Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon. Okay. And then I'm going to Link summon Imduk, because apparently that's his name. Did I know that? Nope. Summon another World Chalice monster this turn using the effect of Imduk, the Chalice Dragon. Summon Crowned by the World Chalice. Then I can Link Summon Blade Master. I Link Summon Orin, the World Chalice Blade Master. You send Imduk to the graveyard to use its effect, special on World Chalice monster from your hand. Yes. I'll summon you. And then I attack directly for game. Boom. And boom. And not not the best, but also not the worst. Like, Megalith was horrendous. Like, I will never play Megalith again, because I hated it. Like, I'm not going to lie, I hated it. Let's see if I can do this, shall we? <laughs> Will I do it first try? Who can tell? Only time will tell. Oh, it's my start, nice. So, if there's no I'm going to summon Lee and use its effect to summon out Chosen, because apparently that's your name. I guess. Especially on one security token, because you know you can't, you can't go wrong with tokens. To be fair, can you? Take so one face down monster. No, you're not a normal spell. And I'm going to end my turn for now with one 100 attack point monster. And the 2,000 defense point monster. Yep. I mean, I'm not surprised really, but... Okay. Banish one world of legacy from your hand or face from the field, then you can target two monsters in the game and special summon them. Okay. 
If this card sends the graveyard, because I'm almost in hand or throws the graveyard, I'll add this card to your hand. You can, no. I'm going to normal you. Then go into you. Then go into you. No, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to change you to an attack position. I'm going to summon you. Use your effect to add you to my hand. Then I'm going to battle. I use my token to attack you first. Just because. And then I'm going to attack you directly with the rest. And then I end. Because that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> what is Oren's attack? 2000, okay. I'll summon you. And then I'll summon you. To go for you. And you. And summon you there. Now, what actually is your effect, Oren? Yep, I'll add another one to my hand. No, I'll special summon it even. What is your effect? Two words. You can turn attack for each word legacy in the graveyard with a different name. You can tribute one world chance this card points to. So, like one of the monsters in the graveyard, I'll special summon it. To your zone, this card points to you. Can only use effect the most time one per turn. If this card sends it, okay. I'm gonna do that to bring you back. Your world chalice, your world chalice. You and you. And now I have three 2000 attack point monsters. Hey. And I'm going to destroy you over here. Ooh. Ah, oh, that's all crawlers. I don't like crawlers. Aha! <laughs> if this card is like summon draw cards equal to the number of world tries, this card points to it. No. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like this for now and then we'll go into attack. And attack. And attack. I love the fact that it's just like, hey, I'm just going to do nothing and then, you know, <laughs> sort up and just summon my late monsters. If this, if monster special from the edge deck, you can shoot this card sent to the graveyard. Uh, no. I'm just going to attack. Yep, I'll use that. I'll get rid of you. To bring you and you back. And boom. Okay, and boom again. And boom one more time. Are you done yet? Stop! Don't just keep summoning, seriously.
Did you just give me life points? Yeah, it did. Oh, unexpected die. I definitely try monsters though, so. Uh, let's use. Okay, okay, okay. I just come from the attack one normal monster in the graveyard, especially summon in the fence position. Okay. Summon it here. Now, if I make these two a link monster, like so. Then. If I do this. Treat you as two and then summon the news you. Let's go boom. I know there's no applicable cards. And then if I attack you with you. And then attack you with you. And then attack directly. What? Oh, oh, come on! No. Oh no, you got rid of- Oh no, you got rid of my monster of Bond. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I do it mind control to take care of you. Okay, okay. Once per turn, you can send one card from each place to the graveyard. If the card sent from this, okay. I'm gonna send you and you. Well, well. That didn't work out one did it too. Huh. Really didn't work out one did it too, that. Ah. Let me summon that one. Because hey, at least you know if I summon that monster, it's going to get some more monster from your hand. Up. No, I'm not sending monsters in the field. Attack you. And then attack you. And then end my turn once again. <laughs> Compulsory evacuation device. <laughs> Do you really? Really? Gonna do me like that. Okay, I'm I'm okay with World Chalice. Don't like Cruella. Don't like Cruella at all. Okay, what do you do? Target two more tiles in the graveyard with different names, add them to your hand. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, I'll add you and you. Then I'll normal you to make you. And then I'll do this just so I can do this and get rid of you and get rid of you. I don't care. I'm just going to attack directly now because I hate crawlers. I hate them. I hate them. They're so annoying. <laughs> Like, extremely annoying. Scenario. Let's check the scenario, shall we? To protect humankind. Accepting these earnest wishes, Oram and the group promised to help her. Accompanied by Lee, the group set off to return to the village, but they encountered several crawlers who blocked their way. Orum, Ningirsu, and Imduk stood before the crawlers with their new strength coursing through their bodies. As they stood between the monsters and what they set out to protect, tension hung heavy in the air. A cold sweat dripped from Orum's chin and dampened the forest soil. As the great tension crescendoed, the party suddenly seized upon their foes, lunging towards the exoskeletons of the crawlers. Orange sword cleaved the enemies with ease. Ningirsu, why is there such a space between Ningirsu and the S and Imduk and the S? I don't know. Ningirsu's lance pierced nimbly, and Imduk's claws teared ferociously at their metal heights. The battle was almost over as quickly as it had started. The power of the world chalice that Lee had granted them was much greater than expected. They couldn't conceal their surprise at the world chalice's great power that now drew their bodies. According to Lee, there are six more world legacies out there, with equal power to the world chalice. If they were to be recovered, it would be possible not only to destroy the crawlers, but to destroy the mech knights who ruled over the world. The information provided a great, we a great ray of hope for the village people who've lived so long in the gloomy forest. Following Lee's words, the guidance and the guidance of the world chalice, the young folks of the forest of the stars set out on a journey to seek the new world legacy. Okay. The hand. The hand. -oh! And so began the journey of Urim and the party in search of the world legacy. Although the party was on a mission to save the world, as their first time in the outside world, everything they saw, heard, and heard felt fresh and vivid. No matter how many crawlers would appear, Urim and his friends would fight them off, and they did so far, and they did so for several days. How long must they have walked with Lee as their guide and the world chalice as their beacon and humid wind caressed their cheeks? Before the party lay a vast swamp. A great artifact was submerged in the muddy expanse. The giant armour laying in the block in the bog was one was one part of the express purpose of this trip, the world legacy known as the World Armour. However, they found more than just the world armour there. Not only on the surface of the armour, but also inside, dark figurines squirmed. Like ants on the corpse of a dead insect, crawlers swarmed on the world armour. Their numbers, the number was countless, from a red mon monocular emitted a bizarre light and filled the party's field of vision. The horrific sound of the crawlers' metal hide scraping against each other untied into a thunderous cacophony as if the earth was shaking. Standing before the three were superior specimens, powerf 
power far greater than the crawlers they had crossed their path with previously. Witnessing an overwhelming sight, the party decided it was reckless to try and break through from the front. On Lee's suggestion, the three friends dared not engage, and instead headed for the world armour. So exactly where they are. Okay. So, oh, we're not going to interfere, we're just going to go directly to where they are. So you're interfering. Yes. Very good. Very, very good. Very good. Will this one take as many turns? I don't think so. Oh, hey, thanks for the life points, by the way. That's the one thing I like about this deck. It just gives me life points. I'll set you. I'll activate you just to be safe. Okay. Bye bye. I'm gonna normal summon you. Go into you. And again, I'm going to normal summon you. I'm going to you. And I'm going to activate your effect to summon you. And I'm going to go into you. And I'm going to go into you. Could this be a bad idea? Yes. Am I going to do it anyway? Yes. Boom! Done! Nice. Gonna summon you. And I'm going to choose you. And then I'm going to activate you. To get rid of you and you. I'm going to attack you directly. And that's the end of my turn. That was a fun first turn. I'm not gonna have that call the haunted yet. Okay, I'm going to normal you. Use no. Okay. And I'll bring you back. And then I'll use your effect to get rid of you and you. And then I attack for 4,500. You know, I don't think this is going to be a 10 turn duel. I hope. I've said it won't be now, so watch it be a 10 turn duel. <sighs> Hello, World Chalice Gar Dragon. And I'll just do that and that. Because the field spell is a problem. It's going to be a 10 turn door now, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Let's just summon out Guard Dragon. Summon out Guard Dragon. Use your effect 
get rid of you and you. And then attack you directly for game. And that's game. And now we have reached the goal. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Within the world armor in front of them, Oro's party became blocked by a swarm of crawlers. No matter how many monsters they defeated, a new swarm appeared, trampling the debris of the fallen, now divided the party struggled. The seemingly endless battles had whittled the party's strengths down to almost nothing. They were unable to advance, but retreating wasn't an option either. They had no choice but to fight until all strength was gone, just then. As Urim and the party were about to collapse, Lee called out to them, By defeating this superior X crawler you should be able to halt the movements of all other crawlers. In the midst of the battle, Lee had discovered that the X crawler was the commander of the crawlers. Turning Lee's insight, trusting Lee's insight, the party pierced through the siege and closed in on the X crawler. The X crawler resisted fiercely, but they channeled the last of their strength to defeat it. Just as the commander collapsed, the swarm of crawlers surrounding the party suddenly stopped moving. Greatly wounded, Urim and the party finally arrived under the world armor, but there was mo but there are more than just crawlers there. Seven colors of light suddenly shone down from the heavens. There appeared seven knights. The figures before them were metallic and emitted a radiant glow that enveloped their bodies in lustrous light. The Mech Knights who ruled over mankind and all of the world had now descended to this very place. Orm and his friends found it difficult to describe the figures with mortal words and could only stand frozen in their otherworldly presence. Then suddenly, the Mech Knights reached their hands out silently. A mysterious energy sprung forth from their hands and began to shroud Ib. Ib was exhausted, no, completely spent. The magical barrier provided by Ib had no resistance to the force field. The rest of the party desperately struggled to rescue Ib. However, with the same light from which they appeared, Ib and the Seven Knights vanished without a trace. Lee cautioned of the danger if Ib's wand was stolen and the other world legacies fell into the wrong hands. Orm and his comrades comrades set out to rescue Ib and recover the next world legacy. Ooh, I like that, I like that. Nice. No. Well, thank you everyone for watching and I do hope you enjoyed and if you did don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share with a friend and I will see you next time. Have fun.